And um, so you'll see these recordings and uh, they will be on my training website. As you see right here, uh, I did one this last week's training and you can watch these and rewatch these on my training website. Can y'all see my screen? Yes. All right, perfect. Um, so today we're gonna jump into a little bit of um, how to present the product, how to present the product. So what you're gonna see here is um, me kind of go through a presentation and I'll, I'll probably you know use one of you as uh, my client and present the product. But before we do that, I wanna kind of just for brand new people explain how important this screen is right here uh, for brand new people. So, I strongly suggest that you take the time to save this training website right here to your home screen of your computer or to your home screen on your phone, preferably onto the phone because I think you'll use it more if you do that and you save it onto your phone uh, versus your computer. And the way you do that is simply we'll show you how to save something to your phone a, a, a website, how do you save it to your phone? You see these cool little videos right here. I'm just gonna show you how one of these works. This is how you save a website to a icon on your phone. So that when you see it on your phone, you're able to click it and it goes straight to a website like this. So I wanna show you this and also on your spare time, if you want, if you forget how to, you can learn how to do this on your iPhone and or your Android, see over here to the right, but this is how you, you save something to your phone. Meet Chris and Mark. They have a little turn of Bitcoin and Ethereum. I don't know about this ad, but let me just ask, I don't know why we have an ad there, but. <laughs> icon to the home screen of your iPhone or iPad for easy access to the agent portal. Open the agent portal website in your web browser. Tap the share button at the bottom of your screen. It's the one that looks like a box with an arrow pointing out of it. Then finally, add to home screen. Yeah. screen. You can rename the icon if you want. We're going to keep this as agent portal. And now you've got a shortcut added to the home screen. You can now access this from the home screen of your phone. And with just a tap, you open the agent portal. All right, so it's as easy as that. Uh -huh. You see these two, these two little um, boxes down here. You've got adding it to your iPhone. And you also, I'm gonna mute everybody real quick. Uh, you also have it where you can add it to on, with your Android. So be sure you watch these little videos because we're gonna go through a couple of things today that I want you to save to your phone. One of them is this site right here. The second thing I want you to save to your phone is our agent portal. Okay, so this is your agent portal, and you should be able to bring that up under your phone and on your phone, okay? And just want to kind of show you that your agent portal, if you're having trouble pulling this up on your phone or pulling this up on your laptop, let me know, and we can get you some help on that. The other thing is that this right here is what we call agent portal 1.0, okay? So if you can imagine, this is what we call 1.0 because this is the original one now what we have if you see this new, new business when you go under new business tab uh, or maybe even marketing tab actually under new business under new business tab right here you see this where it says we invite you to take a look at the upgrades now available in our new agent portal okay be among the first to use it okay new agent portal when you click that, it will take you to a screen and then you're able to go over here to Agent Portal 2.0, okay? So this is 2.0. This is really cool when you see this on your phone because it's really handy because what are you able to do? Gosh, you're able to see all your policies. You're also able to see your recent statements, which would be your commission statements. And you're also able to see over here, this button, which we'll talk about a little bit today, uploads. And uploads is basically just like it sounds. So if you're taking notes, upload means I'm going to upload my business to the company. Okay. I'm going to take a paper application. Okay. I'm going to take my phone. I'm going to click right here on uploads. And I'm going to simply take a picture 
take a picture of my policy and send it straight to the company. Okay, so there's no, no longer do we need to scan and send a application to the company. If it's a paper application, you have the ability to take a picture of it and send it straight to the company. So if you ever ask me a question and you, you know about how do I send this policy in, you're gonna to go to your agent portal 2.0, 2 2.0, okay? And you're going to upload it into the system. Now, I'll back up a little bit and tell you that agent one portal 1.0, remember that we talked about here, has a similar option Agent Portal 1.0, that's the, yes, the, the old one, has a similar option. And what that would allow you to do is to scan your policy in. So if you, if you like to use a scanner versus your phone, then you can take your new business upload right here and you can go to new business and you can scan it, okay, into your computer and then find it on a file and upload it. Okay, so we have two ways. So when you're taking notes, two ways to send a paper application into the company. Upload it here or take a picture of it here. Okay, so just so we're clear, I know we're jumping ahead a little bit, but two ways. You also have a rate calculator here okay, on this. And there's several other places to see a rate calculator also but I'll show you the rate calculator for brand new people, okay? So for brand new people, here is your rate calculator and it's very easy. Click right into here and then you have all you need. This is our simple, simple security plan. That's what you're gonna be using 99% of the time. This is for people over 40. This is what you're gonna be writing most of the time. And this is, what preferred, standard, and modified. So for brand new people, preferred and standard is day one coverage. Okay, so that's day one immediate coverage. Our modified is what we call a modified. Most of you probably know, but this is what we call a return of premium plus 10%. Okay, plus 10%. What does that mean, Keelan? That means if they were to pass away in the first two years, then the company would give them all their money back plus an additional 10%. Okay, plus an additional 10%. After those two years is over, after the two years is up, then we go into the regular full face amount and full face amount policy. So it's just the 24 months. Some companies have three months, three years or four years. So ours is just a two, okay? And then you have them down here and we'll talk about it for just a, you know, for a second in a minute. But your security care plan, that's for people under age of 40, okay? Eye care is for healthier people, ages 25 to 35, okay? And they may need, those are people that might need a little bit more coverage. And then our MIB plan, that's for our people that are unhealthier, people on Alzheimer's, dementia. And that's a growing plan, okay? And that is a growing plan. If you wanna know more about plans and things, I'm not gonna go over them in detail today because I wanted to go through a presentation kind of entirety today, to show you how to present the product to people, okay? But if you wanna know about the product, watch this one right here. Watch this video right here. I did it last week. It's really cool. You can go in here. It's really easy to watch. I have a YouTube channel. Okay, so this is last week's training. And this is, you'll, you'll learn uh, about how to write a product. Johnson. I'm the market sales director here for Security National Live. For Security National Live. <laughs> Live. Uh, I think the fact is definitely a little bit muddled here. But, uh, so, and I've been here with the company for going on. Okay, so you'll see. When you click on those, they're really easy to watch and you can learn about the product a little bit more in entirety. I try to switch it up. One week I'll do um, one week I'll do how to present the product and next week I'll do all about the product. So this week you're going to get a little bit of how to present the product. Okay. If you have any questions, just chat them out. There is a chat box, everybody. Uh, and I'm going to put hello in my chat box. So if you want to chat something to me, 
or, or ask a question, you can use that chat box uh, right over there, or you can unmute yourself. We have a small enough group today that um, you can unmute yourself if you have a question. All right. A couple of little things, again, about my training website and a couple of little tidbits I want you to kind of know about. And I want you to go in here and play with it a little bit. You know, use it a little bit and play with it. You can't break it. Uh, upload a couple of things. Um, look around. Um, but right here, this will teach you how to upload documents. Remember, just like I taught you right here on your Agent Portal 2.0, you can actually change the language on it. OK, you can change the language in your Agent Portal. So if I go over here, I can change the language. All I have to do is go up to this little man up here in the top. OK, click on him and then change this over to Spanish and it will change everything over to Spanish. All right, so those are a couple of things there to look at. We have two ways to, to sell policies. Remember, we have a how to sell a policy in person where I'm gonna teach you this morning or show you uh, a presentation that we use, whether, either, whether you're on the phone or whether you're in person. Either way, I'm gonna show you the presentation. But here we are in simplicity, how we do it and how we write a policy in person. We gather the supplies we need, which are these things, the presentation, which I'm gonna go over this morning. I'm gonna show you the funeral planning fact sheet this morning, where your applications are and your COVID questionnaire if you do need them, okay? Then you simply complete the application and then what, remember? We either take a picture with 2.0 or we do what uh, we scan it or we scan it into 1.0 and then that's it. And that's how you write a policy in, in person. Okay, so it's very simple. We're still in the business of going and seeing people and visiting with people if they want it and if you want it, okay? So we do encourage that also as an opportunity to go sell policy. I'm gonna come back to these things right here, but I have put in this training website, I've put these things. You're gonna to wanna to go to the agent portal and order some of these things uh, because they're free of charge and I will show you how to do that. But I've also included them right here where you can actually click on them and download and use them on your phone or use them on your tablet while you're with a client, okay? Can everybody hear me? Uh, can you tap in chat in your chat box? Tap, type yes if you can hear me in your chat box. That way I know I'm not talking to myself. So can I get a yes in the chat box or somebody unmute and say yes? Yes. Right. Thank you, Chriselle. All right, so. Um, yes. Perfect. All right, thank you. Um, how to sell it over the phone, okay? So for brand new people, we can sell it over the phone. I think I just told you about an example of selling policy over the phone, but it's very much just like selling a, pop, a policy in person, but the person is on the phone versus in person. So you gather your supplies again, log into the portal, okay? How do we do that? How do we log into the portal and find it? I'm going to show you both ways, okay? Remember agent portal, what? 1.0, this is your original agent portal. And you would simply go right here to new business. And you see these boxes here? Go to the red phone, red phone, red phone, red phone. Okay, I'm going to change mine to Security National Life. If you're in Florida and you're watching this, you will need to use first guarantee. But anywhere else other than Florida, use Security National Life. And you click on the red button and it looks like this. Very easy to use, okay? Go in here and play around. Go in here and complete an app. Go in here and write a policy for yourself if you want. You know, we got a contest going on right now. Maybe you all know, maybe you don't know, but I've been trying to tell you, we have a contest going on right now. It's called Spring into, uh, into 2021, Spring into Opportunity. And it's going all the way through tomorrow. You have to have your apps turned in by 10.30 Mountain Standard Time. 
So if you have a couple apps laying around, there's a couple to the right, and you want an extra $100 bill, you can get in right there, okay? If you want a little bit more, you can earn as much up to $350 on this thing, okay? So jump in there. Uh, you've got till tomorrow and, and try to earn you a little cash. While I'm on that, also wanted to show you also if I have it pulled up, um, I don't. But you'll see, let me let me go over here real quick. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting out of the out of the, the ordinary here. Bear with me two seconds. Also on contest, I want y'all to know if you're new with us, we are gonna go next year to either. We're gonna go either, guess where, drum roll. Right here, look at this, just started. We're gonna go to Peru or Bali next year, okay? I challenge everybody, I want everybody on this trip. We're actually going this year in October uh, to Israel. Two years ago, we went to Monaco. Year before that was an Alaskan cruise, and now Nick in 2022, an all, an all expense paid trip to Bali or Peru. Okay, so who doesn't want to be on that? It just started. You're only 15 days into it. There's still time. If you look at this, it's a 13 month contest for ninety thousand dollars. So that's about seven thousand a month. I know it might be a stretch for some people. But gosh, what a great goal to uh, to go in the and they they do it right. I promise you. This year in Israel, we're staying downtown Jerusalem at the Waldorf, I believe. I don't know. I've, I'm kind of a fish out of water there because I <laughs> haven't been many places. But look at that and focus on it because you can do it. I promise you can. All right. So got a little bit off track, but I get excited sometimes. Um, but the red phone on the agent portal. 2.0, okay, I don't want to lose you here. Remember, we're talking about telesales. We're talking about doing a phone application on Agent Portal 2.0. It's the same as the red phone. It's just right here, okay? Telesales, right here. So you can click right in that button, complete your application, complete your application, and then just simply look right here, call the company. All you got to do is call the company right here. Okay, phone verification. Phone verification. It's very easy. They're very good to work with. They're very quick. Okay, so you'll want to do that during this, this time frame. If you're outside of the time frame right there to call the, the company, look at this on this under, under hours of operations. And if you read this next sentence, if after these hours, then either I need, I got a typo over there. I need to change that D to then. Uh, number one, A, schedule a time to help the client call back during hours of operation. Okay. B, the company will call back a client the next day from an 801 number. Okay. So you're either, when you're calling the company, you're doing a three way phone call okay, into the company, three way phone call. And they're just asking the, the client a few questions. They're just asking a few clients a few questions. Is this your name, Mr. and Mrs. Jones? Is this your date of birth? It is. Do you agree to this? Have you had COVID? No, no, no. Okay. And then it's it's over with. Okay. And they will run a prescription check right then and there and give you the indication as to what the client qualifies for. Okay. So it's very simple. Complete the application online and then call the company. Okay. So reverse. I'm going to reverse. I always like to reverse. Start over. We have a, we can sell a policy in person and we can sell a policy over the phone. Okay, so check out those both ways. There's two ways now to complete the process. Down again, just to kind of fly by here, we have another rate calculator. It's the same rate calculator. So use that. Uh, it's right here. I wanted to put it in there for you. And for brand new people, check these things out right here. I'm not going to go through them in detail today. Watch my last week's video or two weeks ago. It's up at top. These are the policies that we offer here at Security National. We have four policies. And I'm going to jump in there just in a flyby real quick. 
and, and show you what it looks like. We have our security, simple security plan. This is what you're gonna be writing 99% of the time, okay? This is for ages 40 and above. We have our security care plan. This is for ages, you see down here in the picture, for people zero to 40, okay? So ages zero to 40, and it goes up to what? It goes up to $15,000, okay? So if you need a little bit more than $15,000, okay, you can jump down here in the bottom in the eye care plan, and I need to change this, but it goes from 25 to 35,000. So in summary, <clears throat> if you get a mom and a dad, maybe they're 25 or 30 years old, they want a little bit more coverage and they need more than 15,000, which rarely we have happen. Most of the time we write 10, 12, $15,000 policies. But if they did, you could jump down here and get them, you know, 25,000 on the eye care plan. And then you have your MIB, your monthly increasing benefit. Watch my last week's video on this one. This is a growing plan, which means that there's a bucket of money here and the client puts in money, we put in money and it accumulates in your bucket. And it's a typically a 10 year plan. So they, the client puts in money, we put in money over a 10 year period, SNL, and it grows and it grows over a 10 year period. And then if the client passes away anytime within that 10 years, then the beneficiary gets all the money in the bucket. Gets all the money in the bucket. Okay? So that's an MIB plan. Okay. If you have any more questions on that, let me know. But we can write it. It's going to be for people that have had Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, maybe a little bit worse medical condition. But most of the time, we're able to fit most anybody we have into the simple security plan, into the simple security plan, because it's a very lenient a plan. Uh, we take a lot of different type of people. Matter of fact, I'll show you something else. Uh, this is a good flyer, and if you want it, let me know. I can get it over to you. Hope I don't have too much opened up on my, on my computer because it will start lagging here. Um, hopefully, but this is a Word document, which I really like. Uh, and if you want it, you can have it and uh, send it out to your people. But this really kind of just boils down what we do in, in summary, okay? Kind of boils down what we do in summary, right? So what we have here, look at this. We have, um, who can we write? We can cover diabetics, angioplasty, stent, bypass, heart valve, pacemaker, cancer-free people after 90 days, strokes, heart disease, heart attack, enlarged heart, chronic heart failure, circulatory disorder, lung disease, emphysema, kidney disease, COPD, liver disease, hepatitis B, neuropathy, amputation, Parkinson's paralysis, muscular sclerosis, lupus, muscular dystrophy, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, seizure, paranoia, schizophrenia, alcohol and drug abuse, medical appliances, even oxygen. We're one of a few companies that will cover oxygen, okay? And by the way, we cover coronavirus, accidental death, and natural causes, okay? So I put this little Microsoft Word document together because I thought I want to, to point out to you and I want you to point out to your clients what we can actually cover because I think when we do see what we can cover, it makes a lot of sense. And you as an agent need to know when you're going out and speaking with people, what we can cover. I mean, and there's very few things we can't cover. Okay, so just be aware of that. We, you know, I know you wanna protect your people and I know you want confidence when you go out in the field that you're gonna be able to write the policy no matter what the people have. And that's what we do. You know, I was a farmer's agent before and we weren't able to write just everybody, but we can now with Security National Army, okay? So I just showed you, if you're brand new, jump in here and play around, print some of these off. These are the policies that we offer. This is a real cool deal in English and Spanish. This is actually a summary, a uh, bullet point summary of our simple security plan. And uh, I know we've got a few people here on the line. Uh, so if I can get a participant to unmute themselves, and um, then that would be wonderful. Angelica, are you on the on you on the line here? 
or Chriselle? How about? I'm here. There you are. Thank you for jumping in. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Good, good. I just have a little task for you here. Okay. All right. Can you read the bullet points on here aloud to everybody? Yes, I sure can. Thank you. So we have ages, um, security, um, the simple security plan, it's ages 40 through 90, 2,500 to $35, I mean, 35,000. Um, it's day one coverage, um, preferred in the standard version of it. Um, there's no telephone interview at the point of sale. Uh, the prescription check only, super competitive rates, accidental death rider available, the child rider is available, um, all diabetic classes are accepted, simple two-page app, 24-hour underwriting, you choose draft date, level premiums for life, level death benefits, um, benefits can never be canceled, and cash value accumulation. Super, super. And Christelle is new to, new agent with us. So let me ask you with those with those bullet points there. Uh, tell me if any of them are confusing. If uh, which ones stand out to you? Talk to me a little bit about these bullet points here. And is there anything you want to ask about on this page? What we're trying to do is provide you as an agent and y'all uh, something you can give to people that really just outlines what we're about. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the only thing that I, and I understand it, um, but when you say the no telephone interview at the point of sale, right? so that means, um, because what I did uh, was I, I did the, I did the online app on okay. um, a policy that I sold. And then I, I, I called a eight, it was an 855 number. Right. It was a number. Uh -huh. And I was supposed to, um, I'm not sure what I called it for, but I eventually, because no one answered, okay. um, I eventually called it back. I guess I was supposed to let them know there was an application on the portal. Yeah, good, 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 uh, good comment here for new people. Remember when we talked about this earlier, how to sell a policy over the phone, we still, we still have to now, and maybe I should change this dot, this bullet point, because before we did, let me just rewind a little bit. Before COVID, okay, we were doing policies just by paper, just paper applications, okay? And just like this up here, just in person, okay? That's all we were doing. So you had to see the people, you had to do a paper application. There was no telesales. Now, when you, with us as a company, when you do a paper application, there is no telephone interview, there's no calling into the company. You do not have to talk to Security National Live to sell a policy in person. Okay, so let's just clear, clarify that. You do not need phone, phone verification. All you do is write the policy and send it into the company. Are, we, is that, are you clear there? Now. Yes. Now. Since we, since then, since now we added the sell a policy over the phone, the reason now we need to do a phone verification, it's not an interview, it's just a phone verification. The reason we have to do that now is because we can't physically see the people. We don't know if they're 100 pounds or 500. We don't know if they're on oxygen. We don't know if they're this or that. So we have to do a phone verification now. And yes, if you do a telesales app on the computer, telesales app on the computer, you will need to call the company and do a verification with your client. Does that make sense? The two different ways? Yes. And Keelan, what I did for my policy was I zoomed her in. Does that count as, I mean, so I still would need to do the telephone. Um, yes, you will have to do the telephone, even if you zoomed her. The only time that you would not have to do a telephone app is if you have a physical wet signature on the paper application and you send it. In. Okay. All right. Thanks. And I'll tell you what, too. 
uh, just for everybody else on the line. I like the phone verification with the company. And the reason is, is that lots of times I get so fast, you know, in my business that I forget to cross the T's and dot the I's. For example, as I'm just reading this to you, this is my training website, but I know that I misspelled a couple of things right here, just like this during the hours or operation. So there you go. <laughs> so I, I get a little quick and, and I don't cross my T's and dot my I's. So what the phone verification does for me, and I think it does it for a lot of people, is it also verifies the information and anytime we're selling a policy and anytime we're doing that, if we have a third party or another person verifying the date of birth, the height and weight, the routing number and account numbers on the account, I mean, they're actually verifying the information you put in. So they're double checking it. And that's a good thing because the more double checking we can get on our applications and the more we can get it right the first time, the least amount of cancellations we're going to have, the least amount of bank account numbers we have wrong. And it's just going to help your persistency on getting policies issued when you have a third person look at it. You know, it's kind of like this. You remember, have you ever gone to your teacher and go, hey, can you can you review this? Or have you ever gone to your parent or your kids that are come to you and go, hey, can you check over this? Can you before I turn it in? Can you can you fix it? Uh, can you see what it looks like? That's what, that's how I see it. So I, I see it almost as a benefit, you know, to, to us and to agents uh, going forward that there's a verification process there going on and we catch something before it goes wrong. Okay. So, so again, good, good question there. And good. Uh, thank you for bringing that up and thank you for your participation. But this little flyer, you can print some of it off and you can even, you know, put your business card with it and send it to people that you know. Uh, I also have it in Spanish here for those of y'all that want the Spanish version. I'm not sure what it says. I'm thinking about trying to learn Spanish, but I don't know uh, which source I'm going to use. <laughs> so we'll try that, but maybe I'll, I'll get a little, uh, um, little Spanish going other than gracias and some other words, uh, you know, dos tres. But anyways, the rate book, jump through your rate book and look at it here. Okay. A few things to point out in your rate book just as a flyby. Uh, when you're looking at the simple security plan, you'll see the preferred standard or modified. Really pay attention though too, because I have a lot of people ask me this question, uh, your maximum base amounts. So those are maximum base amounts for your preferred standard and modified. And remember before we talked about this, we talked about um, what is a preferred at day one coverage, modified day one coverage, I mean standard. And then our modified, remember, 10 years plus the premium, okay? So that's our modified. So take a look at that and that way you know and your clients know uh, what they're getting. Um, height and weight, be really, really cautious on height and weight. And the reason is right here, that's why I put it here. If you get someone in here um, that may be five foot eight, they can weigh under preferred and standard, they can weigh up to 262 and get a preferred and standard. If on modified or graded, they can weigh up to 280. So I just don't want you to get in a situation where you're quoting someone and they're over 280 and you're on the phone with them and they get on the phone verification and they're 290 or 300. And then the underwriters say, oh gosh, we, we have to decline this because of weight. So you've, worked, you've, you've spent all that time with the client and then that policy is gone. It's not gone because let me show you something. If they are over 280 pounds, you can still write them. What you'll need to do is go down to a security care plan. And if you look right here, a security care plan is five foot eight. It goes up to 355 and you can still get a limited plan. Okay, so up to 355, you can still get a limited plan. If you're taking notes, that limited plan goes up to $10,000 only, okay, up to $10,000. The other thing you will have to do on a security care plan is you will have to do a paper application and see the people, okay? So paper app, and you have to see the people in person on this one to get the signatures, okay? So 
Just want you to be clear on that. If you get someone that's a little bit too short for their weight, um, just know where those guidelines are. And I don't want you to have to write a policy and go over a pound or two and, and lose a deal. All right. So anyways, just showing you the height and weight chart, the way you can know where it's at and you don't get stuck out there. Okay. Medications list. This is your Bible. This is your, this is your go-to. I need you to get in there and study a little bit and just know where it's at. It makes, you know, we have uh, on, on the line here, um, Angelica, are you able to, to, to speak for a second? Uh, if you can, unmute, uh, if you're able to, if not. And then Angelica is one of our leaders in the whole, in the whole territory. Good morning. Hi, Gilad. How are you? Um, hi, everyone. I'm doing good. I'm driving. I hope I don't have to read anything. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't. Just, just real quickly, and, and you know, Angelica is just a rock star. She's probably on the way to an appointment right now, or been at appointments and everything. So she just, she's one of our leaders. And I, I'm sure you, if you go to Bali or Peru, you'll see her there. So uh, she's done a wonderful job. But Angelica, just real quickly, how important is it to know uh, the medications list and where the medications are and how do you how to, how to find those things when you're out in underwriting? Uh, well, I think it's a key. In fact, I have two lists. I always carry one with me in my car for my appointments. Right. And I do keep one in my office, home office. So... Before I go to an appointment, I always ask for medication. So I have to make sure, you know, they will qualify and I can call them right. So it is, it is key. And how key is it if you're out and about, you know, shopping or at the mall or with your friends or family or whatever it is, and somebody asks you, you know, what you do and you tell them and um, how important is it to kind of know somewhat know what we take and what we don't take so that you can have a conversation with people? Well, it's, it's, a, it, it's important, you know, it's, a lot, it's another way to keep uh, bringing business. Um, so I always carry my business cards with me. And if I have a chance to talk to people, I will always pass, you know, business cards, let them know that we can help them or, you know, yeah, and you know, here's but, the deal. But I do. You're going to run into people, and I know just because, uh, you know, I was with Farmers Insurance before, and everybody's been with different companies, but you're going to run into, sometimes you're going to be out in the field, and you're going to run into people, and you start talking about what you do, and these people you're talking to are going to say this, well, you probably couldn't, couldn't cover me because I've had uh, a heart attack, or you probably can't cover me because I've got diabetes or you probably can't cover me because I've got COPD. You know, you have, those people think that they can't be covered. And if you know yeah. from your standpoint that you can cover them, at that point in time, you can go, no, no, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, we can cover you. We have a great policy. Yeah. For you. you know what I mean? You want to expand on that? Yeah, I had a couple cases where uh, they were already looking uh, to get cover, uh, coverage and they, they were really discouraged, and so they were they were gonna be on a modified plan with a different uh, company. So, yeah, I was able to give them a, a preferred plan uh, to you guys. So it's that that's why I always uh, on my first time when I talk to them and. I try to get the medications and uh, find out first because, you know, I know that it's, it's sometimes it's been hard for them to find a, a company uh, to get uh, immediate coverage and that's what they're looking for, right? Perfect. Yeah, so she is yeah. so right. So yeah, and that's, that is, is crucial, you know, to build confidence with people and to portray that confidence. So the more you know about Angelica, thank you so much. Be careful on where you're on your trip today or where you're going. So I appreciate you. And you all will see Angelica's name at the top of the list from, from, for a long time. So thank you, Angelica. You're welcome. Um, so, so yeah, very crucial and very, you know, very important that you know these things so you can have conversations when you're out there in the field. All right. 
So just know that, and that's from a star producer and some great words there. Uh, so the, the last thing here, and then we'll get into a presentation and uh, then we'll get y'all off and out of here. Um, but this is very crucial too. This is very crucial right here um, with, with regards to referrals. So uh, Jorge, are you still on the line here? Yes. Perfect, perfect. So tell me in your business, you know, we talked a little bit before uh, about you being uh, with well care and, and doing some other things other than final expense. Um, but tell me also in just a, another industry you've been in, but before final expense, how important are referrals? Um, <laughs> I think they're paramount because, uh, I mean, they are. I mean, they're just part of the business and they're, I mean, everybody likes par um, referrals. <laughs> And of course, if you want referrals, I tell people you have to do a good job in, in what you're doing because you can either get good referrals if you do a good job or people will look at you and, and uh, word gets out, people will want to stay away from you if you do a bad job. Yeah, no, and, and he's totally right, totally right. I, I'll tell you, uh, before I came to Security National Life, I've been here five years, I've going on five years. Uh, I was with Farmers Insurance, and and I'll I'll, I'll do this with you because you're on the line here and let everybody look at. It. But we did it. We did a survey one time because we felt like our agents weren't giving, weren't asking for referrals. So we called we called 10, 10 clients that just bought home or auto insurance didn't matter or, or anything or life. We called them and we asked the question. Uh, how was your visit with, with the agent? And they said, good. You know, how was your policy? Oh, good. Okay. So they were happy. These were happy clients. They just got through purchasing a policy from, from the agent. And we asked them, said, did your agent ask for a referral from you? Out of 10, out of 10 clients, how many do you think were asked for referrals? Two, only two did the agent ask for referral. So that left eight not asked, okay? So there's eight of those clients that were not asked. Out of that eight, how many of those eight that were not asked for referrals said this? Because we asked them the second question. We said, if the agent had asked you for a referral, would you have given them a referral, okay? Seven said yes. Seven, I don't know what happened to that other one. The seven said yes. So we, we essentially as a company and as an agent force lost seven potential opportunities to get one, two, three, four. I don't know how many they would have given us. Referrals, okay? Even if they've given us one a piece, that's seven more customers. If they've given us two, at 14. They've given us 21 potential policies that we missed out on by just not asking those questions. I mean, that's very powerful and we did it, okay? So people that do business with you want to give you referrals. They wanna give you referrals. They want to do business with you and they want their friends to do business with you. So never forget referrals. So that's why we've created this simple little sheet for you to print off and use. And it simply says this in very elementary terms. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, did I make you feel comfortable today? Did I make you feel comfortable? Yes, you did, Kewin. Are you happy with it? Yes, I'm very happy. Did I answer all your questions? Yes, I did. Would you recommend friends and relatives to me? Yes, I would. Then simply, I'm gonna wrap up right here. If you don't mind, write down the name of a couple, two or three people that we can do business with, that I can do business with, because Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I want customers just like you. And if you tell the client that you want customers just like them and just like them, they'll give you people to talk to. They will give you people to talk to. And here's the, here's the second part about this. If they tell you no, I'm not gonna give you any referrals, 
you probably didn't do a very good job and you might have a cancellation coming up. <laughs> I'm just saying. So remember when we talked about the phone verification? Remember when we talked about at the end of the sale, at the end of the process, how you want to solidify the sale? You want to make it stick. You want to make it concrete. You want to make sure they have that policy for as long as they can, okay? For as long as till they pass away. So you've got to ask these questions and ask for referrals. I promise you, they will give you referrals. They will give you people. And you take one lead and turn it into 10 leads, okay? But if you don't, you're, you're just not going to get more business. You're just not going to get more business, okay? All right. So we're down here and a couple more things. If you're looking for some applications and print out some applications, I'm gonna show you in Agent Portal 1.0, if you go to your marketing tab, spend a little time here, go to your supplies, go to your new supplies order in Agent Portal 1.0. And on the left over here, you're gonna see a button pop up or some, some options pop up on the left. Uh, and it's called Final Expense. And then you have the state. You have the state that you're appointed in and the state that you are appointed in over here, okay? If any of you are appointed in more than one state, make sure I know that. That way we can get those states opened up for you, okay? But if you go to your simply general FE right here on the left side, you're gonna see three pages, one, two, three. I'm not gonna go through those right now. Watch my other webinar and it shows you which ones to order and where to go. But right here, you got some goodies. And oh, by the way, um, if you if you haven't seen on my website or have had the opportunity or seen an email, I'm super excited. Uh, we have a new uh, training facility here in Georgetown, Texas, right in the middle of the most beautiful city in Texas. Okay, and if you haven't had a chance to look at it, we're having a training tomorrow, uh, a one day training live down here. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, from 10 to 5. We're trying to have one. I'm trying, I'm trying to have one once a month. Uh, I have a training room here that overlooks a beautiful historic town. I have an office here and would love for you to bring your family and your significant others. Spend a day or two because you will really enjoy it. There's a lot of ladies, there's a lot of shopping, men, there's places to watch football and have a steak and a beer or whatever you want to do. Um, but it's, you, you really won't uh, really won't regret coming down to us. So watch this. Keep, keep an eye out for the next time. This one's full. Uh, it's going to happen tomorrow, but there's more to come. We'll, we'll roll out another one. So sign up. Come down here. It's free training to you. Get some cookies and treats and things and a shirt and a lanyard uh, to brand yourself with. And we'd love to have you next time. Okay. So sign up for that and be on the lookout for it. Just want to kind of throw that up there. Um, so here is the merchandise on Agent Portal 2.0 right here, you'll see, depending on which one you want to use, you'll see marketing and you'll see order supplies. Okay, so go in there and you've got brochures, you've got forms, you've got, um, you can filter by your state, okay, your language, anything like that, okay? So check that out. And that is on the agent portal 1.0 and 2.0. If you have any trouble with that, get with me. And I can definitely walk you through what to order and what not to order. Okay. So let's go back here. And I told you, let me go. Hold on. Let me do a couple of things here. Leads, leads, leads. If you're brand new and you have no lead, you, have, you don't have lead credit, you're welcome to go in here and use, buy some telemarketed leads. They're pretty reasonable. I think they actually went to $12 instead of 10. Once you get lead credit, you can order direct mail or Facebook leads, okay? We pay for up to half of the cost of your leads once you get lead credit. So the more you write, the more lead credit you have. You know, someone like Angelica is liable to have two or $3,000 worth of lead credit, but she can go in and we pay for half the cost of these leads, but so knocks that price in half, okay? Knocks that price in half. So if you have any questions on that, but watch your lead credit and order leads, okay? If you need some help on that, call me personally and we'll talk, talk about it. All right, uh, and then you contact the company. Here's the main number you need in your phone. Main number you need in your phone. This is for your phone verification. Phone verification right here, okay? So, so that's the number to call. So plug that in your phone and save it. And then if you need anything from me right there, there's my information. 
there's my email address and my phone number. And then that's me. You don't need to see that. But anyway, <laughs> ugly picture. Um, so let's roll right into here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to land right here. The final expense presentation piece, OK? So the final expense presentation. So we got in English and in Spanish, all right? So I just want to kind of land in here and go through this a little bit. And then I'll get you out of here in about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, so do I have anybody I know? I've kind of used everybody a little bit this morning, but is there anybody else that's able to jump in and open their microphone up and let me do a presentation with? I'd love to have a guest or a participant that would like to volunteer. If not, I will talk to myself. <laughs> See if we got anybody that wants to talk to me. All right, well, I'll do it myself. So, um, so here is the presentation. And you know, I think it's very crucial that you have this presentation piece uh, pulled up. John? I'll go ahead and do it, uh, Keelan, if you want me to. Uh, and I appreciate you. I know you. I was waiting on somebody else. I know. Figured you'd take one for the team, you know? So here we go. I appreciate it, John. So John, uh, I'm just going to pretend you're my client, all right? And we're, I'm just going to pretend that we're on the phone or over the phone and that you can see this. Now, what you might want to do, anybody, if you have a phone call with someone and they are technically savvy, if you know what I mean, you can send this to them so you have a talking piece. Uh, if you don't, then you can send this to them afterwards. But you can talk through it while you have this. So I think it's always good to have a script, you know, to follow. I mean, everybody's going to get off script a little bit. And, you know, it's very crucial, John. I mean, you've probably talked to people, uh, you know, on the phone quite a bit before. So what are some key, you know, just, if I may just pick your brain, but say, what are some key things that you've learned about talking to people over the phone? Uh, some key things about people over the phone um, is, you know, one, you have to get comfortable uh, with the conversation you're having with them. Uh, you have to... Um, uh, you know, identify who you are and what you do and, and what you're trying to do based on the information that they're going to give you. Um, you know, and, and you have to be kind of clear as to what questions you're going to uh, ask uh, because, you know, we are asking personal questions, but it's the only way that we can help them. And if they feel comfortable uh, with your, with, with the way you um, present yourself, then uh, they're more likely to uh, uh, give you the information that you need. And then once you um, have um, uh, covered that information, uh, basically on whoever it is they wanna help, you know, you gotta find out what their goal is and, and, and what they wanna do with it. Cause it may be for some of their family or it may be just for themselves. Absolutely, no, absolutely. And, and I like the way he said that, um, you know, you have to be a listener and we have to find the need. We have to find the need dug down in there. What is their need? You know, and we have to find that. Is the need to cover a funeral? Is the need to just cover a cremation? Is the need that they just feel like they have to have it? Is the need to give their family, leave them, their family some money, some cash? Okay, so finding the need is very important. And I think what John also hit on too that I can tell in his voice he does very well is you have to get on the customer's level. Uh, communication is about, if they're talking fast, you talk fast. If they're talking slow, you talk slow. If they're talking loud, talk loud with them. If they're talking soft, talk soft. It's gonna make them feel more comfortable than, you know, so listen to their tone, listen to a little bit of their dialect, and, and I think that will make them feel more comfortable. It will make them a little bit more open and receptive. Some people, don't want you to go through the whole spill. Some people do want to hear, hear the spill. Okay, so you'll you'll get some. And when you talk to people, even in person over the phone, you'll tell if they want you to get to the point or if they're enjoying the conversation and just want to talk. All right. So, uh, so John, I appreciate you uh, letting me go over this with you today, and I appreciate us talking over the phone. And and uh, I'm going to go through, uh, through a few things here. I want to tell you a little bit about what we do, just so you'll know. Uh, at any point in time during the presentation or anything, you want me just to speed up or slow down, let me know. How about that? Does that work all right? That'll be fine. 
Perfect, John. We Security National Life has been around since 1965. Uh, and the reason that's important is because we're very secure and stable. Security National Life is a stock owned company, which means we're run by a board of directors. So that is very good because you're putting money with a company that is very secure and very stable. Uh, and that way, when it comes down to pay a claim, which everybody notates with, our non-contestable claims, which means claims that we are not contestable, we pay our claims within 36 to 48 hours, okay? So that's very, I'm very happy to be representing a company like that. So I just want to kind of tell you, you're, uh, you're with a good, going to be with a good company as far as a policy goes, all right? Um, all right. The average, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just responding yeah. to you. Wait. Okay. I uh, said, so no, yeah. thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> and, so, and so always, just like I did just then, if, if the client, you know, you hear something out of their mouth, Make sure you you acknowledge and just say yeah. Oh, did you say something? That gives them a chance to inter interact too. So, uh, the average funeral cost, John, we know this. It's very simple. It's between eight to ten thousand dollars. You, and this is where I like to also add in this, John. You've probably experienced a situation where a loved one, aunt, uncle, mother, father, has passed away in your life, correct? Yes. And so, so in that case in point, you don't have to tell me, but it was probably, there was probably either a policy and some coverage in place that took care of it, or there might not have been policy or coverage that went into place. We may have had to have a fundraiser or a benefit or something, right? Yeah, you're right about that. And so most people have that story. So let them tell it. If you stop right there, and you really pose that to them and you put them in the spot to, to say they might want to go ahead and spill their guts because they may want to go, yeah, my, my mother passed away. We had to scrape up the money and pay for it ourselves. And anytime you get a client talking like that, you're one step closer to the sale. I mean, don't you agree, John? I mean, when they start doing that, it's nearly sold already. I would agree with that. Uh, if you can get them to talk more and, about their personal life as you share your personal information, uh, because they like to feel like we're on equal planes. That's right. That's exactly right. And if you have a story too, as an agent, throw it in there. You have, everybody has a personal story. Everybody has a personal story. Don't be afraid to use your own story. You know, yeah, I had a mother that passed away and she didn't have any coverage and we had to scrape it up, me and my brother. You know, for twelve thousand dollars, <throat> and so I know, I know what it feels like. So the more you can get on their level with them, these are great. This is why I like to have this sheet in front of us, or in front of you, while you're talking about this, because it stimulates questions and, and which is interaction, which is trust. So they're going to start trusting you, <clears throat> John. So we there's there are several things um, that. People think we'll pay for funerals, but they don't. A lot of people have this misconception that Social Security is going to pay for the funeral, and it doesn't. It does pay a benefit to a qualified dependent up to $255. But as we well talked about before, $255 is a long way from $10,000. Um, veterans, are you, are you a veteran, John? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. So this is the point in time when I talk to someone, I, I ask them that, and if they are, I, I kind of go into, well, thank you so much. We really appreciate you, you you serving the country. How long were you in? And you may want to expand on that if you feel like talking and they feel like talking, but this gives you an opportunity to do, but mainly what you're trying to say is that that's not going to cover it, okay? That will give you a couple of benefits as far as where you're being buried and maybe a little bit of money on the, for the qualification, uh, like a $300, you can look it up, but it's not going to cover it, okay? And John, do you have a, you know, a lot of people don't have ten dollars or $15,000 in the savings account just allocated towards a funeral, okay? And most people, and even if I find that people that do, when they see what we have, they want to save that money for something else, and they feel like a plan of, uh, for what we do is better than just allocating. Because, if, you know, if an emergency comes up, that money's gone, and you have no policy and no, no, no money there. Okay, so we typically find that people don't have savings accounts attached to just a funeral and final expense. 
And then the last thing we definitely, John, I know you don't, I mean, do you really want to count on your loved ones to take care of this burden once you pass away? No, I don't want my loved ones to, uh, uh, be stressed over anything. And, you know, and sometimes you might get in this situation at this time in the presentation, you might get someone who goes, well, I've been taking care of them all my life. They can take care of me now. You know, you get those people like that. Well, it's their time to take care of me. They can just put me in a pine box or dirt somewhere, you know, and that's really how they answer that. And at that point in time, you might be talking to the wrong person. And what we have to realize is um, as you see in the picture to the right of that, when it says loved ones, you know, if we're talking this person over here and he's like, no, I don't really want a policy. My family can take care of it. We might have the right person as the proper insured person, but guess who the owner might be? The owner might be the son or the daughter now you might want to own a policy because guess who's when when Papa passes, guess who's going to be financially responsible for that? Okay. So we got to also be listening in their in their tone as to who might be the owner, who might be the insurer. Okay. So so you know, so so basically here's what we have, John, if I'm hearing you right. We really want to leave behind memories, we want to live behind heirlooms, we want to hear leave behind property. We really don't want to leave behind funeral expenses, medical debt, financial debt, legal fees. And that's what we're here for. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Well, that's that's page one. And that's pretty much the, the, the presentation to the person. The second page that I like to go into, it especially works really well um, with, with, um, with couples. John, are you married? Yes, I am. Okay, so if I may ask this, what's, what is your spouse's name? Maria. Okay, perfect. So then this is where I go into this. I say this just point blank. Hey, John, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions here. I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you. It's really fun when I do this with couples, like they're sitting together, you know, because I pick on the man. And it gets, this is where I like to interact a little bit. It gets comical because I say this. All right, John, I'm going to have you fill this out for Maria. All right, are you ready? I'm okay. ready. You know Maria's first name and last name. You know where she lives. You know the city. You probably know her telephone number and you probably know her education level. What's her birthday, John? November 29, uh, 61. <laughs> so did you hear how, and this is just standard. It happens all the time. And a lot of times the man, he gets, you know, I kind of probably get into trouble, but he, you know, he stutters a little bit like, um, you know, what is her social? Do you know her social? You don't have to say it out loud, but do you know her social? No. So John no, is it's... also not rare by not knowing social. A lot of times one or one of the other spouses don't know the social. Sometimes it's due to just they they have the card, or maybe one person might do the business in the family a lot of times, you know, and that's pretty standard too. And somebody may not know it. So Again, we found we found a couple of things, or one thing that John did not know. Okay, you know where she was born? Um, no, I don't. Okay, so you know her occupation. Uh, you know her name. What do you know when y'all were married? The date and the place. I know the date um, and the place. Okay, what about her? Okay. What about her um, father's name and where her father was born? No. Okay. Mexico. What about where her mother was? Mexico. Okay. Okay. Both of those. So Maria is not a veteran. Okay. Maria may have some, a lot of brothers and sisters, right? Or any, or parents? Yes. Okay. Do you know? their addresses and all their phone numbers without having to look it up? No. Do you know all of her cousins or nieces and nephews' names? No. So John, so here's the summary of this. Is it, and I love to do this because when I'm sitting with a couple, what, what is relevant, what is this information? When is this needed? When is this all this information needed in life? 
uh, now when a person well, passes know, away. There, you hit the nail on the head. Person passes away. Okay. So what if if Maria passed away? You would have to look some of this stuff up, right? You would be distraught if Maria passed away. And you would have to look this stuff up and come up with this information. And it would be very hard. This is the stuff that's needed for obituaries at the end of life. This is the stuff that's needed at the time of passing for the funeral home and for the funeral and things, all right? So here's the thing. If Maria were on the line here too, I would say this. John, you take one of these and you fill it out completely for yourself. And Maria, you take one and you fill it out for yourself, okay? And y'all both take one of these because this is very pertinent information. You're gonna you're gonna relieve John and Maria. You're gonna John. You're gonna relieve Maria. This information is here. And then when I and I say it just like this, and everybody take some notes. When I bring back the policy or the policy is delivered to you, you can have this information all put in one place. You can put it with the policy, and it's all taken care of. Does that make sense? Yep. It does. So you heard my tone. You heard my tone, and I said a, a word that I want y'all to all take heed of. It was W H E N. And I said this, and I haven't even quoted John at this point in time. We haven't even talked about pricing. We haven't talked about a policy. But I said when. So I am doing what? I'm assuming the sale. I'm assuming he's going to purchase, and I've got him shaking his head up and down, yes, because he sees value in this piece of information right here. What if you and Maria passed away to, in, in a car accident, you know, together, we'd have kids or whoever, they would not know where to find any of this stuff, okay? So we are actually trying to relieve and release the burden on families by having all of this put together in one spot. Does that make sense, John? Yes, it does. So perfect. So, so that's, thank John, thank you for being my client today. But then you can go into the funeral services. You can tell your client, hey, listen, if you would like anything specifically at your funeral, you're welcome to add it right in here. If there's anything special, Paul Bears, Cemetery, blah, 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 you can add it here. And that way, when I bring, and I say it a second time, that way, when I bring the policy back, it's all in one place. You can call your kids or whatever and say, hey, kids, we've got everything just in case. Or not in case. When something happens to us, it'll be in the top drawer underneath the socks. And it's whatever. It's all there in one spot. Okay. And then I make the client do this. And I say it just like this on this last page. John, I'm going to want you to read one last thing because I want to make sure that we are all together on this. Okay. So if you don't mind, John, read those the, the bullet points. And this is going to be bullet points underneath this writing up here that says final expense provides, final expense insurance provides an affordable, convenient way to manage finances for the end of life so you won't leave a burden on your loved ones. What are the bullet points there? John, read those real quick if you don't mind. It says whole life protection up to 35000 affordable rate that will never increase, protection that can never be reduced or canceled, uh, simple ap application with no medical exam, immediate benefit from the very first day, uh, guaranteed cash value, anyone through 90 years of age is eligible to apply. Does that make sense, John? Yes, it does. Perfect. So let's go ahead and, and what medications are you on, John? And what medications, Maria, are you on, on any medications? So that when I go ahead and quote this, I'll know whether you, you qualify for our preferred standard or not. And I just go right in. I don't even ask them, would you like to buy a policy? I just go right into what medications are you on so that I know what to quote and how to quote it. Okay. And then I go through the sale. Before, at any point in time in here, when you're actually with someone, uh, you know, it's hard to do this when you're not with someone, but if you're with someone, you may want to use this funeral planning fact sheet right here. Can you see that funeral planning fact sheet? What this is, is this the 122 things, okay, that you will have to, I'll just read it, okay? Planning a funeral, especially when you find yourself in a difficult time of bereavement, can be very daunting task. The list that follows 
contains some decisions. So you're helping the client with decisions that would have to be made by every family to make arrangements for a funeral in sometimes just a matter of hours, okay? We've seen the best way to plan ahead and make a difficult time more bearable for three families. Okay, so this is what we're trying to do. You see these things on the on the on the left. These are these are summary, vital statistics, funeral arrangements. Okay, people to notify, bills to pay, collection of legal documents, cemetery ring. So this is really a platform to provide a thinking point to the clients on that day that they can put this all in one place. Look at these bills to pay. Look at the things you have to think about. Look at the extra things that may cost, uh, you know, hairdressing for late, you know, uh, funeral car, coach, church services, uh, jewelry, just things that you have to think about and things you'll have to pay. And this is the reason because of these extra added costs, these are the reasons that we do final expense because it's not just about the funeral, there's other things to take care of and there's other things to pay, other expenses that are gonna be in there. Transportation for the family, arrangements to meet and lodge out of town guests, okay? So you can throw that in there. You can throw that funeral planning fact sheet in there with your brochure and you can tell the client, put all this in one place. That way, when you get your policy back, it will all be taken care of, okay? John, does that make sense? Kind of, you wanna add anything into that? Uh, no, nope, that makes perfect sense. So we, I want y'all to keep it in everybody. I, I, don't, I just want to tell you this. I don't produce robots or I don't like to train robots. I like to train people because everybody has their own spill on. You're going to see some things within the presentation. You're going to see some things within the funeral planning fact sheet that you really like. They really hit home to you. And to be good in what you're doing here and to be you know, that family protector, you find those things and you lean on them, okay? So I'm just trying to give you a guideline, trying to give you a roadmap for you to use. But this is our presentation piece and it is available in English and Spanish, you know, and get as many as you can, order as many as you can, order those and get those that way when you're talking to someone, either on the phone or in person, you have those and you're ready to go, okay? So thank you, John, for that. So appreciate it. Um, thank you. So, so in summary here, you know, we've had an hour and 22. I wanted to just go through that presentation today. I wanted to kind of show you just the highlights of it, okay? And so let's just kind of fly back over and summarize this, okay? Uh, in, in, in the beginning, you know, upload, put this, the final expense life.us on your phone, put your agent portal 1.0 and 2.0 on your phone, okay? Upload documents how to sell a policy in person, in person, how to sell a policy over the phone, over the phone, okay? Your tools you may need, your policies, your height and weight, your medications, okay? We heard from, from Angelica how important medications are, okay? You, here's, some, here's some apps, some shortcuts. Here's some shortcuts to some apps if you need them real quick for these states. There's your leads. Once you get lead credit or whatever, you know, get some leads. But first of all, you know people, you have loved ones, you have clients, you have towns, you have associations. Be sure you brand yourself and people know what you do, okay? Be sure people know what you do, okay? Contact the company and then that's my information there, okay? So I've kept you an hour and 24 minutes. You know, I hope you learned something today. I hope you learned kind of how to present the product because without the presentation, it's hard to make the sale. Go back in there and watch this video if you're brand new on last week's training. It was actually two weeks ago. It will help you learn how to fill out an application if you're having troubles there. Okay, next week, I'll revert back to completing an application over the phone or in person and go from there. But I want to end up, I want to land right here and say for y'all that are on the phone, you know, or, or, or listening to me, you know, and I always end up with it this way. Every policy you write is not about commission. It's not about making a contest. It's about a family protecting. And at some point in time, that individual is going to pass away. 
and that family is going to use that money and need that money. And ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars is very important. When people pass away, they look for a couple of people. They look for the preacher, they look for the doctor, and they look for their insurance person. Okay, and they look for them, and that's who they're going to be looking for. Imagine this. Imagine building a career where you've got a thousand families protected, two thousand families protected. Every 2,000 of those people are going to pass away and they're going to be looking for you and they're going to say this to you if they get a chance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angelica. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, Jorge. Thank you, John. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you for taking the time to find me. Thank you for taking the time to help my family. We didn't know that mom and dad had a policy. Or we appreciate you writing it for them because it took care of us. And that's where the rubber meets the road. When you have those people come up to you, then that's what makes this job worth doing, okay? You're special and you're, you're uh, you know, great agents out there representing a great company. I really appreciate everything you do. I'm here for you. Please, uh, you know, bother me, bug me. I want to make you successful, okay? In any way that is, you let me know, okay? So thank you so much for spending time with me on Thursday. And... Uh, Come down and see me in Georgetown. Come down and see us in Georgetown and we'll uh, shake some hands and or social distance or hug or high five, whatever we can do. So anyways, have a great Thursday. And as I always say in Texas, adios. All right, Keenan. Thank you very much. We'll see. Absolutely. Thank y'all.